is Moe part two. After last week's episode, we now know what Moe is, so let's talk about what it isn't. Many argue that Moe is an evolution of Dorikon, Dorikon being the blatant sexualization of young or young looking girls. The correlation comes from the notion that adult males shouldn't be obsessed with a show like Magical Princess Minky Momo or My Little Pony that's aimed towards a young female audience. Regardless of whether there is any Dorikon involved, it's just kind of hard to justify the fixation and that's where we enter the gray area. However, in my world, the two are completely separate things. Moe is simply a trait in a character that you find adorable while Lorikong is wrong. Think of Moe as the sensation you get when you want to squish an adorable puppy's face. That being said, Moe can be applied to male characters too. So that's enough from Reborn, Totsuka Saika from my teen romantic comedy snafu, and my personal favorite Moe male, Yoshida Haru from My Little Monster. Moe is also a topic of controversy because a lot of anime fans believe that Moe and pandering to the Moe loving audience is what is destroying anime. This chart went viral on Tumblr a while back and it shows how each studio has changed drastically in their style of animation. What can be said according to the image is that a lot of them went from gritty, action, sane and oriented looking anime to sweet, big doe-eyed, pastel colored, sparkly madness. Note that the chart is compiled of the most extreme examples from the spectrum, so take that into consideration. As much as I do agree that CGI and Moe have influenced the evolution of anime, Anime greatly, I personally don't mind. I love all my Moe waifus. What I do mind is when a show depicts a character that is nothing but Moe blob, which means they have no personality traits other than cute and useless. But then again, I could just not watch those shows. Not all anime is Moe-centric either, which is why I don't think Moe is murdering anime. Take Parasite, for example, a manga classic that is finally turned into an anime and it's close to perfection. I'm aware that that's rather bold to say, but it's everything I wanted it to be knowing the manga and Madhouse does it right when it comes to sticking close to their source material. Other simulcast titles that have little or nothing to do with Moe include classics like One Piece and Case Closed, Ace of the Diamond also lacks Moe pandering, and other popular titles like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Attack on Titan, Fate Stay Night have close to little or no Moe characters as well. Don't worry, it's not all Moe out there. Anime's far from being dead, we're just stuck in a trope trend because it's a pattern that works. You just have to find out what works for you. So now that you're a Moe expert, do you think Moe is to blame for all the overused tropes and generic pointless characters that you see in anime? Please Please discuss in the comments section. Don't forget to check out crunchroll.com slash sfnerd to get your free premium membership trial so you can watch a bunch of shows I mentioned. A list of them will be provided in the description below. Mite kuretta arigatou, mata ne!